edition of Chrysalis on the Couch. So we've entitled this, It All Starts With You. We're going to be talking about some self-care ideas and the self-care things that we do to keep our sort of mental, keep ourselves mentally and emotionally happy. My name is Jude Mason and I'm a year two and year three tutor with Chrysalis and I also have my own private practice in Nottingham. And joining me today is Rihanna Lowe's and Sarah Cole, and I'm going to pass over to them now to introduce themselves. So, um, Rihanna, do you want to start off? Yes, um, so I'm also a tutor for Chrysalis. I teach year two and year three. Um, I have my own private practice, so I have counselling clients as well. I'm also a supervisor, so I supervise other counsellors and manage um, a small charity in Bristol, a health charity and wellbeing charity, um, where we have different projects but one of which being a free as long as needed counselling service as well so yeah definitely in need of self-care yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm um, I'm Sarah Cole I've just finished level three actually but due to the pandemic we were running slightly late so I'm doing a placement and I've got four hours left to go until I complete my hundred hours um I've got two children and I live in Chelmsford Okay, so that, that's that's us three. Um, so it sounds like we're all really busy. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, you know, when you're busy, you need self-care, don't you? Um, therapists aren't always the best people, actually, <laughs> to um, to be doing this, but we're but we're trying our best. And I think at the moment as well, with the with the pandemic and the, the, the you know the sort of health crisis, it's really really important, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what do, what do you two do for, for your self-care? What's, what's it look like? Do you want me to go? So I, I take myself out for a yeah, run. Yeah, you go first. Yeah, I take myself out for a run to just make myself feel free and clear my head. I also like just spending time with my kids and just watching trash TV, really. That helps me <laughs> <laughs> release a lot of tension I have. So that, they're my two go-to things, really. Yeah, so how old are your kids then, Sarah? So 15 and 12. Oh, okay. So a little bit younger than my kids. I've got um, a sort of university student. Um, my daughter's a university student, so she's twenty-one, and my son's a little bit older than older than that. So, um, so I'm missing them at the moment, actually. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but I, I too like trash TV. Trash TV is is my <laughs> guilty pleasure. So, what what kind of trash TV are we talking here? <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> I've got a long list. <laughs> So Towie is probably the main oh, one. Yeah. Um, we were we watched we watched Love Island about four times over lockdown, just like the reruns. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all of the other reality stuff that's been on as well. We're just like reality junkies, really. <laughs> oh yeah, me, me too. And when when my daughter is here, we we watch all that kind of stuff avidly. Um, and my husband's not so keen. He says he's not so keen, but you know, he kind of gets yeah, drawn, into it, drawn into these things. So yeah. maybe, maybe really he is a bit more keen than he, than he thinks. Yeah. Running <laughs> is great, isn't it? I mean, oh yeah, I love it. It's a fantastic, you know, means yeah. of self of self-care, isn't it? Yeah, and it just frees my mind. Like if I feel under pressure from work and stuff like that, it just makes you feel so much better. I think the endorphins as well kick in, don't they? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah I mean I, I'm not a runner I'm not a runner but I do like I do like to walk mm. and just being in a, in a really we've got some really beautiful areas around here actually you know everyone thinks Nottingham is a big city and and for sure we've got that but we've got a nature reserve nearby we've got some lovely country parks so there's always somewhere that you can go yeah you know to get that kind of nice green experience if you like yeah no, I agree. It's nice to get out, isn't it? Especially it is. when it's lovely. Dry. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
I know I do um, I do some walk and talk therapy with clients and that is just that's been a really nice way actually to be a little bit safer in the pandemic but also to you know to kind of experience the outdoors a bit more yeah what about you Rihanna what, what's your what's your go-to I'd say there's sort of a post and pre-pandemic version of self-care and, and during the, the lockdown version of self-care. So definitely, yeah. and very, very sort of simply, but I think it's really underestimated, is a nice, long, hot bubble bath. And it's amazing how, how many people don't just take some time just to sort of have a bath. It's so, I, I love my bath. It's so, it's so important mm-hmm. to me is my long, hot bath. Um, so I'd say that's my general self-care and it's just time, you know, t- time in your own headspace. Um, but before that, I would say, and it took me a time to get to that self-care place, is um like I do like a good spa day so but with, with sort of the whole thing not just I'm going to be in a night for an hour for a quick massage just saying I want the two course meal and the glass of Prosecco and the robe yeah. and the you yeah. know and it's not something that's always affordable so it kind of can't I mean, lovely if we could do that all the time but yeah. you know, there's, a, there's a self-investment piece in doing that um, and interestingly, mm. I actually quite like doing it on my own rather than with other people, <laughs> because okay. as much as it's lovely to do these things sometime with friends, actually, that's still there's something about just being in your own headspace just for that day. That's there's nobody needs mm-hmm. anything from you. And especially as a counsellor, a tutor, it's a very sort of you're always giving out, aren't you? So yeah. just yeah. to have that um, that piece just for yourself is, I think, yeah. not just important, but, you know, it's an ethical principle, isn't it? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely I don't think you can be you know having these discussions with clients can you and you know talking about self-care if it's something that you that you don't do yourself and and certainly I've I've realized that you know at times I'm not really practicing what I'm preaching here and and then you have to sort of almost take yourself in hand don't you yeah yeah because I think for sure this pandemic has has been it's been a stressful time, hasn't it, for, for a lot of people. I, I totally agree with you about the bubble baths, by the way. I can spend two hours in. in oh, the- see, I'm not. I can't. I'm just shower. I'm a shower person. <laughs> We're going to convert you. Yeah, yeah I'm, well, I'm going to try, actually. I just don't like the crinkly feeling, you know, when you... Oh. <laughs> Can we turn into a pre right? That's all right. That's all right. I, think, I think during when the, when the weather was lovely, I didn't have as many baths actually. So for me, it's kind of when it gets cold, it's just something I like to do. Mm. Comforting, yeah. And I have my book in there with me because um, reading for me actually, I don't know, don't know about you guys, but reading is something I've I, I absolutely love reading. I kind of read myself to sleep every every night. I've got to this. I'm not sure that's particularly healthy, mind you. Whatever time I go to bed, I feel like I've, I've got to read because um, sleep is is pretty important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I do love reading, and I'll take you know my a glass of wine or a cup of tea in the bath with me, my book, and I I could spend quite a few hours in there getting really <laughs> crinkly. <laughs> and there's a self care aspect even to that. I think. I mean, there's so many. Mm nuances to self-care and I think for reading there's something actually and so I forgot to say I also have a daughter who's 17 so (laughs) also a mum so I forgot that on my list of jobs because it is a job isn't it in itself it is a job yeah and it's yeah absolutely and she um she's the one that reminded me when we've gone on holiday so I think when you've um and you might find this as a student as well when you're either a counsellor or you've been studying for a really long time I think there's something about getting into a habit of picking up books that are to do with counselling or psychology mm-hmm. or, yeah and when we were going on holiday it's probably maybe even a year ago we were, well, obviously it wasn't recently um and I was packing some books and my daughter was like literally picking them back out and saying mum mm-hmm. like put some fiction in and so yeah, literally I had to actively yeah. swap yeah. the book like Carl Rogers yeah. coming out which I didn't really want to do but because mm-hmm. I love Carl Rogers um but put in sort of like some something more murderous in rather than rather than counseling you know or something more mm-hmm. romantic or something that was just not a counseling book so even within our self-care are we really switching off sometimes I suppose yeah and the thing with fiction that I find is that whatever's going on in your own life even if there's some stresses and anxieties in your own life when you get into somebody else's life via a fiction book, you you literally are, for me, you're mm. stepping into somebody else's world, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
escape yeah it's escapism yeah. I mean, one of the things that I that I love to do for for self care and for um, stress relief is dancing, but that's been more difficult. So I I started dancing when I was about seven, um, and I've, I've pretty much danced ever since. And it's something I absolutely love. You know, as soon as I hear um, salsa music in particular, it just lifts my spirits. But unfortunately, that's something that I haven't been able to do over the pandemic and dancing in dancing around your kitchen's okay it's it's you know it's better than nothing I suppose yeah um and it's just not something that um you know the dance classes haven't started and we were hoping that the dance classes would start soon and then of course not we're down. not down again <laughs> again yeah, uh, there, has yeah. Been stuff, there has been stuff on zoom and I have, yeah. I have tried to do a little bit of that but nice to go with people though isn't it when you do something like that yeah. it's nice to have that relationship and absolutely. friendship basically, isn't it yeah have sharing it with somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely I mean I, yeah I, I think I go for the dancing but yeah you're absolutely right you know when I when I get there we have a little chat about what we've done this week and you know and it's just fun to just kind of I don't know smile and laugh with other people yeah yeah in the room when you're doing it you know and so that that's made a difference that's made a difference to me but I think some of that is just thinking outside the box a little bit isn't it but everything's become digital hasn't it so you can actually have your hobbies and your things you go to digitally rather than physically going somewhere but sometimes it's just yeah. not the same is it no, I've, I've, I've found that a lot. I mean, one thing I would love to do, and maybe this conversation will get me back onto it. I used to paint quite a lot. I used to do a lot of watercolours. And that's something that I've kept. I've actually gone to the cupboard where they are, they're all kept a couple of times, but I haven't really got everything out and started again. And um, I'm not fantastic, you know, I'm not fantastic. It's nice to just build anything, but in the moment, isn't it? And just paint and forget yeah. everything else. I brought my mum actually painting by numbers, a big canvas that she could do for her birthday. She loved it. Yeah. She locked herself away for like two weeks and just finished a huge canvas with really oil paint. Yeah, she absolutely loved yeah. it. Yeah, it's something I think that, that it's, it's a nice thing to do, isn't it? That kind of create, creativeness and... Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe after this, I will. I will. Mm. I'll have a little go. Colouring. <laughs> I don't really like paints. Paints too messy. <laughs> I like colouring. Oh, you see, I used to be a primary school teacher before I became a counselor. So oh, getting perfect. messy. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't like messy, messy time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, although getting messy in the classroom is a little bit easier than getting messy in your own house. Isn't maybe it? that's your apprehension. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's okay for somebody else's place to be messy, but not, not my sofa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there is something in, in being creative, I think, and you don't have to be brilliant at it, do you? You don't yeah. have to be, you yeah. know, produce some sort of, you know, yeah. Van Gogh type masterpiece. Yeah. You know, humans, we're, we're humans, we're, we're not machines. So as much as all the things that we have adapted to in the last six, seven, however months we are in now, mm. yes, we're capable of doing it. Yes, we can do it. Yes, we can function. But as humans, we're meant to do more than function. We're meant to yeah. feel more than functional yeah. stuff. And so, yes, we can do this, but like you say, that kind of being with other people, that creative aspect, even the arts at the moment. I mean, that's something I'm a huge fan of. I love going to London and watching a mm. musical. Yeah, theater. I love you the theatre. It's the so, theater. I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? it it's so emotive. Mm. And so, you know, I think there's a therapeutic, therapeutic aspect to the arts as well. And, you know, mm. yes, we, you know, it, it's the functional stuff that we have to survive. But humans are meant to do more than survive, aren't we? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's definitely. that aspect too. A lot of new. There's definitely a lot of things that come up um, with self care with the pandemic. Um, some self care aspects can also be that learning to say no. Um, mm. To say learning to say no is self care. A boundary yeah. is self care. And I think we're mm. we're more accessible. We're ever more accessible working remotely than when we were in person. Yeah, I agree. Because you're constantly yeah. on your phone, aren't you? Or your yeah. video, yeah. Mm. It's, it's it's sort of we want to still have those boundaries but be understanding to people's circumstances mm. but when you're in person you know say you're seeing someone in your counseling room that day for an hour 
and then they know that you know there's no sort of interaction between unless mm. there's kind of a change and yet that kind of having that remote access does that mean that kind of extra self-care is needed for those boundaries because are we a bit more accessible and a bit less switched off mm. than we would be I think I think you're absolutely right and that's something I need I have to remind myself I'm, I'm a bit of a people pleaser um, I'm aware of it so I don't and I used to I think I used to very much if someone asked me to do something I would I would immediately jump in and I would immediately yeah. say yes or I would immediately see see something could be done and I would offer and I think you know now what I tend to do is and that's part of being part of being a people pleaser and part of also I'm, I'm very spontaneous and I've had things in the past where I've where I've jumped in to do something and afterwards I thought oh I'm not really sure I want to do yeah. that and it's it's now too late and so I think it was a kind of mixture of those kind of two aspects of my personality and now yeah, I've, I think I'm a people pleaser as yeah. well I'm, I'm the same I think yeah which yeah. I'm aware of it like you say I mm. think you have to sort of what I've started doing, Sarah, um, you know, is just kind of taking that pause to think, think it through. Do, do I want to do it? Do I want to say yes? yes. I don't necessarily say yes in the end, because often I still do, because, you know, I, I, I don't know. That's the sort of person I am. I like I like being busy. I like yeah. I like being helpful. I like being busy. And I, I guess I get something out of that as well. Mm -hmm. I don't say yes to everything anymore. Yeah, yeah. I don't jump in immediately. I kind of have that time to consider a bit first. Yeah. And that is self care as well, right? Absolutely. And that step yeah. back and, and realizing. I've realized with the pandemic that like, I used to rush around like crazy. Mm. I'd go to London to work, come back, do dinner, do everything. Like mm. now I think, how the hell did I ever manage yeah. to, to do yeah. that? Yeah, it's actually been good for me to realise that I was probably running on empty quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I think it's okay, isn't it, to sort of think. Well, you know, I had I had somebody say to me that like in the last few days, I felt a bit guilty because they they'd found they'd found the pandemic, they found lockdown the first time, and going into it now, they actually didn't find it too difficult, and they almost felt guilty about that because. Yeah there are people who are finding it really, really difficult. But then yeah. us feeling guilty about it if we're not finding it too bad, it's not going to help no. the people who are. So I think, you know, and that's, that's self-care as well, isn't it? Just letting go of that that guilt that we feel for things that... Yeah. We can't change. Control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that can turn into gratitude, which is really good for us. You know, the kind of mm. acknowledgement of, mm. you know actually where am I I mean one of the I, I don't know if this is something you've seen but the, one of the sayings I saw which was so good is that we are all in the same storm but we're all in different boats mm, and yeah. I thought that's yeah, really, that. yeah. when people you know when people say we're all in the same boat we're not all in the we're same not, boat no. we've got very yeah. different circumstances um mm. and you know for me I I think I'm, I'm you know I have gratitude for what I have around me mm. I have food I have you know my income's okay and I'm not at risk of, of I don't think I'm at risk of losing mm. my job I might find out I'm not a tutor next <laughs> month you never know hopefully not um but you know I doubt that's fine all of that's you know and we have our health and we have everything we mm. need and and so we can have gratitude and it's also okay to say and it's also really rubbish that we can't go to the theatre. And sometimes we're allowed to say, mm. and it's also a bit rubbish. We're allowed yeah. that piece as well, because there's bound mm. to be something that's a bit rubbish for everyone, but absolutely gratitude because of knowing there's there's people that have, have lost loved ones and, and are kind of deep in grief or losing their jobs and mm. so kind of having that balance that we're allowed to, you know, we're allowed to feel all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've had moments where... You know, those moments where you feel a bit sorry for yourself that we all that we all have, you know, and um, I've got my um, one of my kids um, lives in Manchester. So he's, he's 24 and my daughter is is at uni. So she's she's 21. And there have been moments because I see them a lot, even though, um, you know, even though my son's in Manchester yeah. and my daughter's at uni, we, we, st we still we meet a lot or we did. We did meet a lot. And so that contact's got a lot more sort of Zoom now. And, you know, so there are times when I feel a little bit sorry for myself and think I really want to go and see them, really want to go to Manchester and give them a big hug. And, but then I'm really grateful as well because actually there are different ways of, 
of connecting with people. You know, yeah. it, some people don't have that, do they? They don't have that yeah. connection. And Absolutely. And, you know, the, our, our relationship is exactly the same. It's just, you know, we're not seeing each other as much at the moment. And it's a temporary, it's a temporary thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's very important, forever. actually. Yeah, it is yeah. forever. Yeah, that, that piece is important, even in client work, the kind of, and mm. whether it be the pandemic or any situation is that, you know, this is temporary and, and, and yeah. you know, the saying this too shall pass, that's mm. always very useful. It's, it's again, getting that balance between acknowledging how rubbish it feels right now and not having to hurry up out of it. We're allowed to feel rubbish. And I think the more we're allowed yeah. to feel a little bit rubbish and watch Netflix and order some pizza, we, you know, we're allowed those days. Watch that rubbish trash guilt. TV, watch, Sarah. Watch that yeah. rubbish TV, exactly. And like, without guilt. <laughs> It's just, unfortunately the guilt keeps us down in this place which means we're not oh. really resting um yeah guilt's a massive thing though isn't it and you know we we were saying you know we've all we've all got kids haven't we yeah. and um i think kind of i don't know mum guilt can be a major thing can't it yeah yeah definitely yeah. and it kind of feels like it gets you every which way mum girl yeah. you can't win doesn't it can't <laughs> win. <laughs> it's, i know i know our kids are a little bit older um mm. you know my, my kids are the oldest i think here but i mean you know when you have really small kids i can still remember that if you go to work you feel guilty yeah. if you don't go to work you feel, you feel guilty, guilty. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like which which version of the guilt am I going to take on here exactly. yeah. yeah absolutely and it, you know it's some um, it's kind of sometimes you have to make decisions that um you don't know if it's the right decision as a mother but I've been a single mum yeah. majority of my daughter's life so kind yeah, of that, that kind of yeah. thing about yeah. working because mm -hmm. you, you know you want to well you're the one that's providing at the end of the day but yeah. also how much they they want you around at the same time yeah. teenagers though they want you around but they don't actually need to talk to you as long as they know you're in the same house yeah, they're, they're good you know like, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of really shifts and change but um you know you never you never know if you're doing the right thing you can only love your children and, and kind of you know hope mm. that that decision that comes from genuine love is the right thing and then they grow up to be lovely human beings and you're like I must have done yeah. something right you know yeah. so yeah yeah definitely see your standards coming back the full circle it's <laughs> I've definitely yeah. had that. I think now, like Ella, my daughter's Ella, now she's 17. I'm kind of like, no, 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 I've done a good job, you know? So I'm in that that mm. kind of, I've done a good job place at the moment. So I'm okay with that piece. Yeah. I think mm. the kind of, the guilt stuff, I think can sometimes be, sometimes it comes from that other people's expectations and reminding myself, I don't have to meet everybody's expectations, mm. you know, when, because you can't meet everybody's expectations all the time. And um, going back to that bit you said before about kind of saying no, being a people pleaser, I think that's really going to be common in this profession, whether we're students, whether we're qualified, mm -hmm. you know, experienced, because we go into this profession because we're caring people and we yeah. go into mm -hmm. the profession often because probably we're wounded healers for some, you know, for some reason or another, there's a wounded healer aspect. Yeah. And so I, I had to myself really look at that rescuer, people pleaser and turn that into something that was going to actually be useful to me and to other people mm -hmm. and so that's a whole process to kind of go through that's healthy for other people healthy for me um and I think um it's that bit I think that um was said before around knowing when we can choose not to so when we do and when we don't and saying yeah. no meaning we're not a bad person it goes into that being good mm -hmm. stuff and being likable and being a nice person and kind of that that we know through mm -hmm. our studies and things that that need comes from somewhere and actually, what's it like to say no and not be popular that day? That's hard to hold yeah. sometimes. Because yeah. it is. It's all about us, isn't it? It's not really about pleasing that other person. It, it comes back to us, doesn't it? It comes, yeah, it comes back to our needs, doesn't it, really? Our need to be liked. Yeah. yeah. What's it like not to be liked? I used to have to be liked by everybody. But, mm. I mean, it's not the same. I think it's also not the piece where we lose we don't have to stop being kind nice people good people whatever that is mm. you know we, we but it's being able to be that person and being allowed to say no and being allowed to have mm. a boundary and not having to kind of sacrifice so much that there's nothing left of yourself it becomes something mm. different and and not not safe for anybody anymore and that's such a huge thing to learn when we're a counsellor and in life actually yeah oh, absolutely Definitely. it's liberating actually say no isn't it 
Oh, I'm I'm a monster now. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be such a people yeah. pleaser. Now I'm like, when I learn to say no, I'm like, oh, I love this power. No, know, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's quite liberating to do it and think oh, nothing happened there. Yeah. Oh, the world yeah. didn't end. Yeah. Nobody what, was upset. What, it was what I'm thinking is going to happen when yeah. when, I, when I say no. You know, because yeah. actually nothing nothing happened. No one really minds. No. You, know. you you did once upon a time yeah, yeah exactly yeah. exactly we yeah. did um i taught module 10 yesterday for year um year two and we we um we talk about the wounded healer mm. there and that's quite that's that elicited lots of interesting discussions actually yeah 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 it's interesting, isn't it, that self-care, we started talking about things like, you know, spa days and exercise, and we've gone on really to talking about keeping ourselves kind of emotionally yeah. safe. Yeah. In, in a lot, you know, we, we've shifted the conversation from something that we actually go out and do to ways that we treat ourselves, I think, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on a daily basis. And I think as well, there's something with um, with clients. Um, I know there's sometimes we can say maybe at the end of a session to a client or sort of take care or take care of yourself. But mm. one thing I like to do at the end of sessions of clients is to before the end of the session, sort of maybe sort of five minutes. It depends how tough the session is. Sometimes it might be 10 minutes before sort mm. of like help the client to kind of come back into the world again because they have to go off and function for a week or two before yeah. they're back and I always like to say so tell me how you're going to take care of yourself mm. so it's not just a sort of passive take care how are you going to take care of yourself how are you going to actually, actually do this how are you going to do yeah. this and it's amazing yeah. how many people when they first come to therapy have never actually asked themselves what do I want how do I take care it, it, it's it's you know I forget sometimes until I have a new client that the questions I've learned mm. to ask myself that once upon a time I didn't either like I took a long time to get to that place through probably becoming mm. a counsellor and looking at myself before then yeah. going out and sort of helping other people to do it which doesn't mean we all get it right we all mm. have defaults still we all go back to those defaults every now and then mm. um, but to kind of actively say tell me how you're going to take care of yourself and it can be anything some mm. people um have told me that they keep a chocolate bar and a and a notepad in their glove compartment and so that's a little treat for them after a session or they say i'm gonna i'm gonna go for mm. a coffee just along the street because i my practice is near kind of a, a main street with nice coffee mm. shops so they say i think i'm gonna yeah. go for a coffee before going home or i'm gonna go for i'm gonna walk the dog before going home mm. and so it's just that 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 bit about them before they have to go back out yeah. into the world Sometimes when you, I've, I've talked to people about rewards, how are you going to reward yourself? And the immediate thing is when people start thinking about rewards, they think about these huge things, but actually just that being able to, I'm going to treat myself to an hour off and have a bath tonight. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or um, reward is like financial money reward yeah, kind of. Yeah, people think of these numbers. massive things, yeah. don't they? You know, and I say, no, a reward can be a really small thing. It can be you know, actually, I'm going to have, I'm going to sit down for 20 minutes and, yeah. you know, just, just read my book or, yeah. Yeah. you know, get yourself into sort of good, good habits of, of valuing, valuing yourself. Cause I think that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's not necessarily yeah. that yeah. every time you do something good, you have to go out and buy a new pair of boots or a new um, dress. I'll have to change that then. <laughs> Yeah, but after, <laughs> but it's not something you can do every time. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm joking. <laughs> I'd love to. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. retail therapy. Oh yeah, that's a that's a whole therapy. I'm definitely into that theory. Mm. I've actually been journaling quite a lot during mm. this pandemic as well. Okay. First of all, I started, I said to my kids, let's all three of us write a diary. Well, when it first went into mm. lockdown, they kind of did three days and I'm still going. So sometimes <laughs> I read back and I think, wow, we've been through so much. And that's kind of like a self-care, isn't it? Like seeing how you've managed and yeah. protected yeah. yourself really from things. So yeah. that will be interesting to read, Sarah, when it's all over. Yeah. Your when I, went, I read back, went back to like March when the schools decided to close and yeah, my my posts weren't great. <laughs> so, 
Oh, yeah. Okay. But just think in years to come, like when you've got grandchildren or great grandchildren, yeah. that will be like a historical document. Yeah. <laughs> Pandemic memoir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had to wash our hands. Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. will go, oh, you know what happened in 2020? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, we will. It'd be so interesting to look back. Yeah. That point you made there, Jude, I think is a really important one about kind of how that looks so different to everybody. Um, and it's something to bear in mind for ourselves and clients as well. Mm. is as much as you know I haven't always been able to afford a spa day so a spa day she's in not spa, spa day I haven't always been able to afford that so that's you know being careful maybe sort of our suggestions to other people because actually not everyone has that capacity and yeah. I haven't always had it either and that can be finances and that can be time so when you said there about 20 minutes maybe somebody that, that's great because maybe somebody mm. doesn't have an hour or two hours because actually their life is such at the moment that it, it, it just cannot be an hour and so we're trying to come from a place of that it mm. has to exist somewhere so even if it's 15 minutes even if it's you know mm. sometimes people might think well I haven't got an hour so I won't do it at all but it, it's yeah it's I agree with you yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm, I see that a lot you know um and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you you do as well a lot of people have this all or nothing mentality don't they yeah. so if they can't have it all they have nothing and <laughs> it's yeah. And, you know, and I think that's such a such a shame, you know, uh, and at the moment, often we don't have something in the form that we would like. So I don't have my my dance classes in the form that I would like. You know, I can't go out doing my salsa dancing in the form that I would like, but I can put my salsa music on and do a bit of dancing in the kitchen. It's not the same, but mm. you know, it's that choice, isn't it? Or if, if I can't have that, I'm not gonna have anything at all. I think that's a bit of a shame really, because, mm. and that's what I you know, meant earlier when I said, sometimes we've got to think outside of the box because yeah. life is not the same as it was back in, back in February, March. Mm. So what we're gonna do, just do, yeah. just do nothing. You know? yeah, you're right. Make the best out of what you can. It's yeah. what yeah. we need to do, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite human, isn't it, for us to do that polarised thinking. It's either this way or that mm. way and forget there's a whole range yeah. of things in between that spectrum. I think people yeah. have been really good at that, though, don't you? In, in the main, people have been good at that. So this idea, well, I can't see family, but actually we can do a Zoom quiz or we can do, you know, or we can do something different or we can't yeah. go out to the pub or whatever, but we can... Not at the moment, I know, but you know, we yeah. could possibly go and sit in a park with somebody yeah. and have a picnic, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of yeah. there's ways, there are ways to you just like you say, look out, look outside the box, don't you have to think outside the box and mm. come up with a different, yeah, person. yeah. So, what, what are we going to do then for our self care? <laughs> I'm putting, putting it back, you see, on Rihanna because this is oh no. <laughs> So what, I mean, what, yeah. what are we going to do today to to sort of address our self-care needs or this week? This week. See, this is I mean, this is a perfect example of how good it is to have all the answers for everybody else apart mm. from ourselves and but how oh. important self-care <laughs> is. So I better practice what I preach. Yeah. How what am I going to do for myself this week, this week, this week, this week, this week? Of all the things I'm thinking of, unfortunately, are kind of like, I'd like to go to the cinema, I'd like to go to the theatre, I'd like, so I think what I will do <laughs> is I will watch Hamilton on Disney Plus for the 20th Ooh. time. I've oh. not seen that. Oh, it's yeah, great. Well, obviously it. everyone's got their yeah. own taste, but right. um, yeah, they've, they've actually put quite a few musicals sort of on line for you to watch or on yeah. different things so mm. I, I miss going to see Hamilton seeing it a few times in London love Hamilton mm. so I think okay. this week I'm going to commit some hours to watching Hamilton this week okay Good I'll email you later on in the week and check up on your <laughs> <laughs> okay don't worry we're going to do the same to you <laughs> what are you going to do Sarah so I'm going to start up my running again so I'm going to start going in the mornings. Now it's light, a bit lighter in the mornings. I'm going to get up and go before the day starts and get out there. And I'm actually going to have a bubble bath. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Back. Tell us if you enjoyed it. I will. Yeah. 
I'll go for a glass of wine and my book, actually, like you said. So I'm going to see, see how, maybe a candle as well. Who knows? Yeah. Wow. That's lovely. Good. I love that it. Like yeah. a, that's like a spa evening. It is. <laughs> On its own. Well, how about I, you, Jude? Um, well, so on Wednesday, normally I um, I do some mental health education at a homeless hostel and do some counselling as well. At a, it's one of my kind of, it's one of my hats that I wear. We all, you know, have various things that we do, don't we? So that's important to me. However, with the, with the lockdown, that's now been um, sort of suspended for a month. So I have a walk planned um, on Wednesday with a friend at our local nature reserve. So I'm looking forward to that and also um reminded me when you were talking about hamilton but one of my favorite tv programs this is us is back on tv so that's oh. um sit down and and watch that with a nice cup of tea so that's a couple of things it's not hmm. not not major not major but it's a couple of things i'm looking forward to this week nice yeah. So what's what's your plans for the rest of the day then? Oh, today, what do I have? I have um, one more client this, this evening. Mm -hmm. um, Me too, yeah. And then I'm actually done by 6.30, so today might be the day for Hamilton. Oh, okay, yeah. I've got a lasagna that I made yesterday ready, so I have no cooking to do today, so that's good. Um, yeah, so maybe that. Well, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm finishing by seven tonight, which is quite nice as well. So I've got a, um, a, a relaxing evening, nothing in particular, but a relaxing, a relaxing evening. Because I think when you work, because I worked all day yesterday, had a long day yesterday. So it's nice to have a little bit of an easier day afterwards, isn't it? Yeah. I know I left of work. So of my oh. full-time job, I've got an hour left and then dinner, drop off to dance and... Just mum stuff. <laughs> yeah, mum stuff's and lovely then, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, mum stuff's lovely. Dri dri like driving them to and from places, so yeah. Mm. But it's an, it'll be an easy evening, it's nice. Yeah. So your kids <laughs> back at school then, Sarah, presumably? Yeah, they went back today after half term, yeah. Mm. So, how, yeah. How are they finding that? Is, that? is that better for their mental health, do you think, to be busy and... Um, I think so. I like, they like seeing their friends and they like having normality and structure, which is that they didn't really enjoy us homeschooling very much. Mm. Um, and, you know, just being in that environment is so much better for them. Mm. My daughter does dance, but her dance classes end on Wednesday. So he, she's got dance tonight and Wednesday and then it's closing mm. from up because of the lockdown. Yeah. Is she is she a good dancer then? Is she is she Yeah, she's, she's really good and she's really disappointed that it's closed yeah. and it's, yeah, but it can't be helped, can it? No, it can't be helped. Hopefully we might be able to save some semblance of Christmas, mightn't we? Yeah, they're doing yes. online, they're doing like Zoom classes from Thursday onwards. So Yeah. Oh, that's something. Yeah. Well, we've got we've got some nice things to do this week then, ladies, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we will have to keep each other um motivated on that. Check in or check, check out. Yeah. <laughs> what have you done this week? <laughs> we'll get to Friday and we'll be like, um, <laughs> we're hypocrites. <Yeah. laughs> and I might look, I might say, um, I've heard some really good things about Hamilton actually. Yeah, I have I mean, as well, actually. Yeah. I would like to see the show as well. Um, it's so I amazing. do love a musical. Yeah, I mean, I like um, Les Mis, I think, is my favourite. Oh, no, it's yeah. not Miss Saigon. Miss Saigon, I love Miss Saigon. And then mm -hmm. Les Mis, and then Hamilton, I think. But um, my daughter's obsessed with Hamilton, actually. So we've seen it mm. quite a few times. And um, last year was her 16th. And we went up to London. Um, we went to we went, we saw Hamilton around that time, but we also went to see somebody called Todrick Hall. Um, mm. He was on some a dance program actually as a he judge was, yeah, yeah. He was. so we went to see him in London Palladium and this is like a fame came to fame story here mm -hmm. um and just to the side of us there was this guy and I said to my daughter I said I'm sure that's he's in Hamilton and it was one of it was actually her favorite she was like oh my goodness it is and we hung out mm -hmm. with him for the whole evening so oh, that was a, nice. a that, that was a self-care <laughs> that was a self-care day that was yeah. really fun Oh, that yeah. sounds great. And of course, I've not mentioned one of my big self-care things, and that's watching Strictly. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. So I feel this is a whole other one. We could be talking about all the oh. lovely TV programs that we love. Yeah. 
I, and I could talk for hours on Strictly. I really could. I'm like a super fan. Yeah, I do like it. It's good. Got like a, a sort of spikely ball in the middle of your 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 front room going round. Yeah, like, oh, going I love it. I, I love it. And that was one thing about the pandemic, you know, it's strictly not going to be on, you know, because that would be serious stuff then. But, uh, you know, it, it, well, they? Yeah, well. they have handled it really well. Yeah, they have done. Well, I think we've come to the end, ladies, but we've got lots of nice things to do. Thank you for the conversation. Lovely. Um, yeah, this has been really nice, actually. This has been a bit of a treat meeting. You often, often as tutors, we don't get to meet each other, do we? Because we all work remotely. And obviously, we don't get to meet any other students other than our own students. So it's been brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>